Hi, this is Rob Rocks for Point Blank Music School. I'm a professional mixing and mastering engineer, songwriter and producer. Recently I did mixes and masterings for artists like Seven Lions, Ellie Golding, Lupe Fiasco, Paper Diamond, Monk. I'm doing a multi-series about STEM mastering. STEM mastering is very popular at the moment because it's less time intense and actually it's cheaper than a full mix down. What is STEM mastering? Instead of mixing all the single files, you only get the stems or subgroups like drums, bass, synths, vocals, you, and you mix them together and add the final touch or adjust them as you need it before you start the mastering process. At the end, you have yeah, you have more control than a traditional two-track mastering. This is part one. We're talking about bass management and single chain processing. This is a track by an artist named Vasky. The song is called Weightless. Um, let's listen to the final master. It's over here. <laughs> As you can hear the sub or the bass or actually it's it's an 808 sound is one main, main element of the song. Let's jump right in and start with the the beat section. The beat section starts over here. I'm going to mute all these other elements and let's focus on the kick first. As you can see, I didn't add any EQ or compression to the kick. I really liked the kick and it was very well produced. So the only thing I did was I added a parallel compression chain. So I rooted the, the kick to about 30. I've added a compressor over here. Some producers, they like to use the dbx160 i like the h compressor the gain reduction is around minus 10 db and i've added a pull tech eq to add a little bit of 60. so here's with it without it The bass is pretty much the same, nothing fancy. The sound is a little bit muddy, so I started with a, a compression to control the bass and the mix to make it a little bit more even. This is a, an EQ. I cut it around 240 and I used the mono maker so everything below 140 is is mono and I've added another compression which is side chained to the kick this is my trigger kick over here. If you're not sure about the release time, you can go to your inspect arrange window, go to your inspector, go to delay, and over here you can see the milliseconds. 116 note is 103 milliseconds, and this is synced to your BPM of your song. So you see, my bass had a release time of 103. Mm -hmm. 
Usually I group all drum elements to an aux and add a bit of drum compression. For this track I felt it makes more sense to compress the kick and the bass. So kick and bass are rooted to bus 52 which is over over here. Let's listen to this one without any plugins. All right. First thing I did I added harmonics around 250 just to make the the kick and the bass a little bit more present in the mix. I've added another compression to control it. Well, you can see the the metering. It's, it's a tiny tiny bit. And last but not least, um, low cut, just to remove everything below 25. Okay, let's listen to the full mix. Without any plugins. Again, with the plugins. Alright, so the last thing, I I just felt that it needs a little bit of more low end. So this aux is rooted to bar 33, which is over here, called sub. Let's solo that and let me exaggerate that. So I've added a high cut filter at uh, 140. I only use all the frequencies below 140. As you can remember, I've added the mono maker on the bass. So everything below 140 is mono. So I'm focusing on this mono signal right now. Um, I've added a plugin by way, it's called Low Air, to increase the sub, to crank it. If you don't have this plugin, you can use uh, the Logic Stock plugin called Sub Bass. Mess around with this one, you, you get pretty much the same effect. And uh, Stereo Imager at the end to make it a little bit more mono. And then you mix it slightly back into the track. So here's the track without it. The next main element is the guitar, so let's listen to the final master really quick. The guitar is playing the main melody in the intro, over here. No. Over here. I felt like this has to sound very special. Um, this is the guitar that was given to me.
first of all, I added a little bit of compression to control the, the louder notes and to make the, the performance a little bit more even. Then, um, this is a guitar amp. I cut out the bass frequencies, the mid frequencies. I boosted the, the, the presence so that the guitar pops out a little bit more in the mix. The guitar loses a little bit of muddiness as well. The next thing is another EQ, cut out the mid frequencies around 300. A little bit of excitement. the compressor then I've added a saturation tool to add a little bit of harmonics Another compressor to control the performance again. And last but not least, uh, a fa the famous SSL compressor. I feel like if you add the famous SSL compressor, it sounds like you hit the instrument a little bit harder and a lot of people are familiar with with the sound of the SSL compressor. So let's bypass all the plugins. Alright, that was part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>